We recently received a very nice question about our cameras. Which camera do we like best? Our Leica SL2 or our Fuji X-T5? Exactly. So two big names. When you look on the price sheet, you probably think the Leica must be the winner. Is it that easy to answer that question? No. But I would say yes. <laughs> so let's start out with a philosophical analogy. Yesterday we made a few notes, so we have a few points to refer to. Of course, everybody says cameras are tools, blah, blah, blah. I would compare it with a car. A car brings you from A to B. A camera brings you from A to B. A would be your reactive image. For example, you're on the street taking a photo of a stranger, capturing your, your friends or family members. You're reacting to the situation. Or you plan out a very big st studio production with a big crew, with a big concept. And this would be your imaginary, well-planned, thought-out work. That's your A point. And your B point then would be your final image. A few factors that make your final image are of course the colors, the dynamic range and the tones. I specifically noted these things because when we already talk about our cameras, we also have to talk about the sensor because without the sensor, the image can't be taken, can't be captured, if you say so. To finish the point, which camera we like the most, we think that as long as the camera works, as long as the sensor works, the shutter works, your SD card is in and you have uh, empty space, <laughs> as long as it works, you can capture, you can make, you can create. In these days, even your phone can capture raw images. When working with raw images, it doesn't really matter which camera brand or body you have. As long as you know what you want to achieve and you know how to control all the different settings in the edit, you can get there with almost every camera. I would say that the lens is the biggest impacting factor to your image, to your video. Because without the lens, the sensor wouldn't do that much. So I would say Think about the lens and feel about the camera. What do you mean with that? When we feel about the camera, we, we, we touch the camera, we use all the little dials, we use the menus. That's why I say feel the camera and think about the lens because the lens is the most important choice you can make before taking your or making your work because it impacts everything that comes out way more than the camera itself. So I would say, critically analyze all the available lenses for any camera you want to purchase or you want to get more than anything else because you you're gonna invest into the system you you probably want to own more than one lens and down the line it's thousands of euros or dollars So I came back into photography about two or three months ago and I stopped taking pictures for over six years. <laughs> it's quite a long time and now I'm gonna show you three of my favorite recent pictures also from our Trieste trip to Italy. I'm just gonna start out with this funky bird. Why I like this picture, the bird is sitting in the perfect light situation possible for this moment and that it's perfectly separated from the background you can see that that's the water up here with the reflections of the houses and the pier he's sitting on and i really love how the shadow light ratio works on this specific picture coming up to the second one it's this here we went up to a little park area and there was this construction area and in this car here there is actually a father sitting with his little daughter and he, the father is talking to this person. And because of the composition, it's actually a surprising moment. It kind of looks like that this person holds the car and that the car is kind of falling down the hill. And I really like that on the picture and also the light and shadow situation here in the reflections on the cars. The last picture here is this one. It's another view of the construction site. We came back 
kind of near the sunset time. I took it because I saw that the dust was spreading out in the area. Let's see how that works. Okay, so I've got my three selected photos right here. They are all captured on the same day actually in uh, Trieste, Italy. This is a perfect example of foreshadowing the moment. It's quite a street photo in my eyes. Why I like it that much is because of color, composition and the expression the person gives off. I saw the person coming from a little side street already like 10 seconds ago and intentionally chose my settings and chose my composition and waited out for the moment. So it actually worked out very nicely. He's, he isn't perfectly in focus but that doesn't matter to me. I think how he walks and how he looks is quite interesting. We've got this nice balanced two windows on the left and on the right. And the counterpart to the person is actually this little manhole here, manhole cover. And of course he has a red jacket on with a little yellow sweatshirt under it. And this makes a perfect color contrast as well. So that's, that's why I like this photo quite a lot. What I like about this one is that I chose to offset the level of the picture. So the horizon line isn't straight, but on the other hand, the pier kind of seems straight and like shooting into the infinite ocean. So that's why I feel this picture is special to me and also nice to look at because composition wise, it's super simple. You only have sky, a little bit of water and the people on the pier. So the last one I chose is uh, quite interesting. As you can see, I played a lot with highlights and shadows and uh, my, the mids and the colors. Uh, this is a little, little swarm of little fishies swimming in the Trieste water. I love it. It turned out I would actually love to try to print it and see what it's like on a big, big, big paper. I'm gonna jump into Lightroom right here and show you the before and after of this one because I think it's hilarious and you would never expect it. Here you go. This is for real. <laughs> this is for real, the before and the after. In today's video, we don't have time to go over the editing process, but if you want to know the editing process of a picture like this one, let us know. It's, um, yeah. I think the result speaks for itself and um, yeah, it only shows what's possible when you capture raw files. Before you start worrying about your camera gear, I know it's quite easy to do that with all the influencers and all the media and all the fuss about every new camera release these days. Purchasing new gear all the time or switching up the gear won't improve your work directly. The best and free to you available thing to work on are your own lenses, your eyes. The way you see light, the way you see the composition play out in front of you. What really helped me the past few months or years is knowing my lenses and knowing the lens on my camera. I mean by that focal length. When I put on a 35mm full frame, for example, I see the field of view of the 35mm lens in front of me. When I put on a 85mm lens, I see, I look for the 85mm composition. I think that's the one of the biggest impacting factors to my ability to work out compositions. So you may be asking, how can you train it? Use fixed lenses, stop using zoom lenses, because I think zoom lenses quite like give you more of a headache than uh, improvement. Of course, they are handy for jobs or videography, but for your personal development and your personal work, highly suggest fixed lenses because you have a nice limiting factor that forces you to work with that one focal length. As a photographer, I want to capture those little moments, little treasure gems between the moments. That's how you get like a very authentic human experience, authentic emotions, the unstaged, you know what I mean, the not AI photography moments. 
finalize, finally, I want to point out the reasonable times by new gear. Okay, first point, of course, would be you broke your, your camera gear, it's broken, it, it got stolen, whatever, then you will need to buy a new camera or lens, whatever. When you start hitting limitations, so for example, you start out with automotive photography, it's very fast paced type of photography, for example, you will find out that a good old Leica SL2 with its slow processor and uh, slow autofocus, it's not slow, but very unresponsive and not that secure, um, will limit you, especially if you start working for clients or high paid gigs. I shot a birthday party with the Leica SL2 and also Leica Q2 back then, it was horrible. I missed so many moments because the focus just was gone into Nirvana. The camera wasn't able to operate anymore, searching, hunting for focus all the time. Especially in low light situations when it got dark and the, the, the party guests got a bit drunk and it was more funny because they laughed a lot and the autofocus, it didn't catch up. Yeah, especially when the moments are then gone in one or two seconds. Of course, you could argue use manual focus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have fun with that. I want to rely on my autofocus. And the next point would be the use cases. For example, I notice about myself that I am more often taking pictures of birds and I now come to my borders with my 35 millimeter lens because it's not close enough and I'm now considering buying a telephoto lens. You guys probably know this situation when you buy new gear and then all it does is sitting around in your shelf and uh, wanting waiting to be sold again. So that's that's a situation nobody wants to be in because it wastes your financial resources and your energy and your time. Good last point would be to gift gear to your maybe friends or also your children. Think about it. How amazing it would be to one day gift your good old Leica or your Fuji or whatever which isn't being manufactured anymore and can't be bought anymore to your child and leave them something with memory and with uh, the mommy or the daddy uh, uh, marks on it. <laughs> <laughs> and leave them something with memories and emotions because we all know when we get something from our grandparents or from our parents, it holds a big value of emotions and memories to it and that's something so beautiful what we can share with our fellow human beings. Exactly. So I hope we made a good point and also gave you a different perspective on camera gear and camera gear choices and uh, we all struggle and we all try to learn and improve so everything will turn out fine. Anything you would like to add? Let's go edit some pictures. Let's go edit some pictures and we say ciao and thanks for watching. Ciao. Try to... And it's just beautiful. <laughs> Come on. Um, Poster... They're more affordable than a Leica for sure. For sure. So, and the next point would be... that I <coughs> yeah the, the the mommy or the daddy uh, uh, marks on it <laughs> <laughs>